I've worked on your orchards of peaches and prunes, slept on the ground by the light of your moon. I'm Rory O'Connor, and I've been making what people call social issue documentaries for more than 20 years. I met Robin Romano, and I hired him to specialize initially in the field of children's rights. Robin went off and worked on another project, very, very successful, about child labor called Stolen Childhoods. And Stolen Childhoods was the first uh, theatrically released feature film that dealt with the aspect of global child labor. We were able to not only document the abuses, but best practices, and not only around the world, but, but here in the United States. And what happened was, and what we found is that these groups were able to take portions of stolen childhoods and use them for their own education and advocacy. And it was a way by which that they could continue to use pieces of the film to raise money, raise awareness, and actually to begin to change these children's lives. One of the best examples of that is Rugmark. After a film like The Carpet was made, and subsequently the follow-up film that I made called Death of a Slave Boy, um, it allowed support to build for this organization, Rugmark, which is your best guarantee that carpets aren't made by children anymore. And as a result of the three million children who were making carpets in the subcontinent when I started work on these films, now they're only one and a half or 1.2 million. So you can say that these films literally have a concrete effect on the ground where it matters most. It's been nearly five decades since Harvest of Shame aired over Thanksgiving. And in that period, I have found that things have not gotten better for migrants or for their children that are American citizens. And I think now is the time for a new harvest of shame. If we are going to move forward as a country, and if we're going to honor our commitment to our children and our future. What almost any independent filmmaker that I know of will tell you is that the largest part of making documentaries now is not actually making the film, but is finding the resources to do so. I happened over the web on some information about this organization that I had never heard of before called Shine Global. It seemed to be dedicated to helping filmmakers find resources to make films and to advocate for children. You know, we were chosen to be the second recipients of uh, Shine Global, uh, giving us some resources to uh, make a trailer about this film and then to work with us and hopefully to find the resources we need to make the film. So we're, we're just ecstatic at having discovered Shine Global and, and at working with them, frankly. These are the underfed, the underprotected, the underrepresented, the disenfranchised. These are the people that deserve our voice that deserve notice, that deserve that their plight be brought to the public. To do otherwise, I think, is simply irresponsible. We're very hopeful that in exposing this condition, in educating the American people, that they will take it upon themselves to take action, including if that action means that here in the richest country, not only on Earth, but in the history of Earth, if we have to pay a little bit extra to enjoy the bounty of the United States, well, wouldn't you?